guess who's bad bitch hi everybody welcome back to my booktube channel my name's tolani and you're watching tea time with t reed maybe i'll read a book or maybe two or three i'll add a few more paintings to my gallery i'll play guitar and knit and cook and basically just wonder when will my life begin maybe i'll read a book or maybe 17 i'll add a few more paintings to my gallery play guitar and knit and cooking basically just wonder when will my life begin so hi everyone welcome back to my booktube channel if you've been here before welcome back and if you're new here you're most definitely welcome into my inner circle some quick disclaimers before i get into the video number one if I'm not being as loud as usual, my voice is sore and I'm very offended because I've been gargling salt water since last night and I have the audacity to be offended that it hasn't worked yet, but okay. I'm really upset that I can't shout how I usually do because if I can't shout, who am I actually? Very tired, okay? I just want to sleep. I don't even want to be awake right now. I actually recently released a novella called The Moonkeeper Files on Amazon. If you have Kindle Unlimited, it's on there as well. And I have my writing series coming to the channel very soon. So I'm going to talk more about The Moonkeeper Files in that. The Moonkeeper Files, I wrote it in one day and I wrote it for catharticism because my whip was giving me a headache. The Moonkeeper Files is set in a society where it is illegal for you to partner up with someone in which your zodiac, so your star sign, is incompatible with. And there's these two characters, Deandra and Devontae and their zodiacs are incompatible but they can't seem to get away from each other keep away from each other and yeah but anyways let's get into the video so today i'm doing a review for the black kids by christina hammond reed and i gave this a four out of five stars on goodreads and i was talking to the books and brain girlies i was talking about it a few weeks ago and a lot of things have been happening lately and I just think so much about race and abolitionism and classism and so many issues and this book actually explores some of the topics I just mentioned so I really wanted to come and review it on my channel. This is a new release and yeah I just want to talk about it. The Black Kids takes place on the backdrop of the Los Angeles riots of 1992 or aka the Rodney King riots and this takes place there. The main character her name is Ashley Bennett and she comes from a wealthy middle class black family so they live on the right side of the tracks and her life is seemingly perfect but when the Rodney King case emerges her seemingly perfect life begins to shatter before her very eyes. She starts to see prejudices everywhere including the prejudice emerging amongst her group of friends and for the first time ever she starts to question who is the us and who is the them and that is basically what the black kids is about. If you've been watching some of my videos I say it a few times that I am a 50% character driven ca person and I am 50% plot based i need both to truly enjoy a book the main character ashley is an unlikable character i detest her i don't like okay detest is very strong but i do not like her at all i think she is a what she is a clown that's what i think she is to me personally i wouldn't even say she's ignorant because she is aware of everything that's happening she's aware of the injustices black people face but the way that she reacts to these things up until the end of the novel so it's not until the end that she starts doing small small improvements one two improvements here and there and i don't even think that would have occurred if not for some certain events that take place in the book but i digress so she's not ignorant i think she's a coon that's how it read to me you can disagree with me but me personally i thought for a large portion of this book Ashley was a coon she was an uncle ruckus if you don't know who uncle ruckus is he's from boondocks and the reason i didn't like ashley is number one she constantly ignores her friends blatant racism their racism her friends it's not even passive aggressive it's very blatant racism it's not one of those things like mm, some of us would think this is racist and some of us would not nah they're racist and in a minute i'm gonna give you a few extracts from the book another thing is Ashley seems to think that she's better than other black people because her family has money. Like, there's this air of superiority with Ashley and how she regards other black people. And I really don't like that about her. Like, 
no matter how much money you have in this world you are black okay you are a nigger and you will be treated like a nigger it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire millionaire no the color of your skin ashley they will always see that so don't pretend don't be stupid and she knows this this is why she was really grinding my gears because like i said she's not ignorant she is completely aware of everything going on around her and she chooses to ignore it and for what conformity because her main group of friends they're all white by the way she's the only black girl in the group another thing she did is like she always refers to the other black kids in her school because she goes to a private school and the other black kids but they're you know mostly they're on scholarship or whatever she refers to them as they actually you are black and her father even has to constantly correct her and be like they're not they these are your people actually like you are black and apart from that she is not a good person she's a terrible person she's not even morally great she is a bad friend she's a terrible friend she's a horrible sister and she causes trouble unnecessarily for one of the characters in the book a black boy because she is jealous of them because they managed to achieve something she can't and again i think that comes from a place of her thinking that she's better than all the other black kids i told you there were some occurrences of blatant racism from her friends and me i don't just come and state things okay i am a lawyer english student pee -E, point evidence explanation so on page 14 one of her friends have says woman is the nigger of the world another friend courtney sighs and says don't say that word with ashley sitting right there number one from that you know that they already say this word behind your back it's only out of courtesy because you're right there courtney has told heather not to say this word are you a knob you are a bastard you are a dickhead by the way when most nigerians say bastard i don't mean bastard in the traditional sense i just mean you're a fool ashley says in response it's cool i get what she means I always say things like are cool when maybe they aren't. What do you mean maybe, Ashley? Sometimes I have so much to say that I can't say anything at all. You are a dickhead. Go and get dickhead tattooed on your forehead because that's what you are, Ashley. That's what you are. Ashley also has a sister. Her sister's name is Jo. And Ashley often gets onto Jo. She often criticizes her because she believes Jo should be grateful that they're the good black. You know, they have money, they're safe and secure. And she doesn't understand why Jo should be, why Jo can't just be grateful for all that they have because they don't have to suffer like other black people. Because Jo is really, she just got into like her activism she's always protesting and she's advocating for the rights of black people and poc as well and ashley doesn't get it but this is a conversation that takes place between joe and ashley on page 119 joe ignores me and continues it's not just about rodney it's about all of us about all our black and brown brothers and sisters struggling to make ends meet in a system set up for them to fail we have to change the system ashley says our parents aren't failing i know exactly what she's trying to say but her dumbass doesn't need to be out in the street saying it. Not now. It's too dangerous. Now, Joe now says in response, don't be willfully obtuse, Ashley. I could have been Latasha, who's the girl that got shot. Or you. If there's not justice for one of us, there's no justice for any of us. And just the fact that she says she's dumb for saying this because it's dangerous for her to be saying this outside. Like, is it dangerous for her to be saying this outside? Yes, of course. But it's always going to be a dangerous thing for you to be black, period. And she's just fighting for the people, them. And it's the fact that she says she understands what she's saying, but she still chooses to think in that manner. It's just little statements like that that really grind my gear. And then this is what she says on page 44 about her and her sister, which is backing up my point about how Joe should just be grateful. There are many battles Joe and I don't have to fight. We are lucky, black girls. My parents worked really hard to make us so. It's like Joe feels guilty for all the, of her good fortune. Why can't you just be lucky, be happy, be grateful? So yeah, she says that and I'm just like, just because you and your sister are in a fortunate position doesn't mean that we should ignore the plights of black people everywhere. Like, what are you talking about, Ashley? And then on page 158, at lunch, the black kids huddle around. They're not as open with their bodies, as free with their laughter. They sit and whisper with one another, them, us our they my father gets mad when i refer to black people as they they are you those are your people he always tells me so she doesn't like even though she's black she doesn't see herself as 
they're black because she believes they're black is different because of the position she's in and the kind of people she surrounds herself with etc etc and i'm just like ashley this is a choice you made by yourself because she's grown up with these white kids her friends her so-called friends but the black kids are right there and she never approaches them or nothing it's not even like she's tried to integrate herself with them and failed she hasn't even tried i can understand that fine her position may be a bit different from the other black kids but is it really that different ashley i don't think it is it's like you're purposely trying to segregate yourself from the other black kids i did not like ashley at all i much preferred ashley's sister joe because joe is more woke than ashley and joe is down for the people she is an abolitionist anti-capitalist communist anti-racism activist so i did much prefer joe instead of ashley to sit down and listen because like i said she's not ignorant and she does know and understand that black people do get treated differently and unfairly instead of you to sit down and maybe learn something she just kind of criticizes and in a way ridicules joe even though ashley and joe's parents don't necessarily agree with the way that joe has chosen to deal with things and how she chooses to deal with the injustices black people face their issue i don't want to spoil it but their issue is very different from ashley's issues ashley's parents their concerns for joe and her activism come from a bit more legitimate place in my opinion and there's some other things as well that i can't say because spoilery but they're also worried about that and so that also ties into it therefore it's not solely because she's advocating like they don't have an issue that she's advocating for the rights of black people i think it's the way that she goes about it because joe she gets herself into some sticky situations i also really adore lashawn lashawn is this black boy that goes to ashley school and i love him he's incredibly smart he's so funny let me just say that he deserves better now i'm going to talk about the plot so as for the plot in the black kid i really liked a lot of conversations and topics that i explored in the novel it was a discussion about the perception and treatment of black girls slash women in the black community which i really enjoyed there's also a discussion about representation which i loved and i'm actually gonna read you a section just for context ashley's mother took them they looked for a black santa and her mother says these things matter even if you don't know it yet and ashley says it seemed a little silly when i was little but now i think she was right it seemed a little silly when i was little but now i think she was right if all the heroes in our stories are white what does that make us i'm glad we left our cookies and dairy free eggnog for a fat black old man even if he was imaginary the face of our joy had gray whiskers as nappy as the hair atop my head and blasted james brown sings christmas songs and the jackson five christmas album i like that for the brief window he was real Santa looked like what i'd imagine my grandpa to look like if i'd still had one and i think that is a really great argument if somebody asks me why does a representation matter i could literally send them a picture of that paragraph because i believe it so much especially the bit about if all the white people are heroes what does that make us that really resonated with me representation is so important even if you don't know it what i loved most about the black kids is how it explores how black people deal with our trauma differently now me personally i will never ever police the way somebody deals with their trauma somebody deals with their grief i feel like you have no right to say this is the wrong way to deal with something or oh you shouldn't deal with it like this you should know you should deal with it like that like who the hell are you to tell somebody how they should deal with their sorrow you're nobody so you need to settle down and sit down and put in your seatbelt and mm, mm, close your lips that's what you need to do and amongst black people we are very divided there are some black people who believe that the systems in place such as the justice system education system are inherently racist they were created to purposely work against us and so they believe in abolition that there's no way that these same systems that are inherently racist can serve us justice so we need to burn that shit to the ground that's what they believe there are some black people that believe there is no point for us to be 
peaceful no justice no peace they don't listen to us when we're peaceful let's make some fucking noise and so we riot we loot we do things like that because when we make noise when we now bring violence that's when cool you want to listen that's when suddenly oh your ears are wide open yeah but then there are other black people who believe no yes the judicial system is a mess but we can reform it we can make it anew and so they protest peacefully not to say that abolitionists don't peacefully protest please don't misquote me as they lobby their mps or politicians or whatever they believe that they believe that the system can be reformed so it serves all people not just the white majority and so that the system will be just for every single person irrespective of your race or gender etc etc and they believe that there needs to be more black people and poc put into positions of power such as the lawmakers and our politicians and the police department so that change can be affected because if there's more of us in these positions then surely we will make things more fair for people that look like us right and who's to say whose side is right or wrong i personally know what side i lean towards but this is not a political video this is just a book review so i'm not gonna go there but you know you know what i mean but who's to say that oh the way you're thinking is wrong it's idealistic it's optimistic like if that's what you believe cool that's what you believe if that's the way that you want to deal with the injustices that we face i am nobody to tell you hey 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 and I sit down there. I always enjoy hearing the different perspectives and sides to the story because you know what both sides have valid points and I can see where each of those sides that I just said before are coming from so I very much enjoyed that aspect of the novel those are my thoughts on the black kid please if you've read this novel tell me your thoughts and feelings tell me what you thought about the book please like comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed in the link down below there's all my social media please feel free to follow me on those thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye